How's it going guys? In this video we're going to convert this Chevy Cobalt from drum brakes to disc brakes and this is the 4 bolt pattern. Um, some things about it we got collected is a uh, Cobalt SS rear brake calipers. Um, I had to make brackets so that the caliper has something to bolt to. Basically uh, I got to tear the whole uh, system apart, remove the rear uh, wheel bearing, remove the back plate for the drum brakes. This here will go in the place of the back plate. And then uh, it has these ears on it that will grab the brake caliper. Also, we needed rotors. Um, I searched the internet up and down, and there is no rotor that's 4 on 100 that has these dimensions um, I did find some for uh, a Mitsubishi um, what was that Mirage from like the mid 90's there is a 4x100 pattern for that but the problem is is it uh, I'm not sure the hub would fit inside of this um, also this distance right here is much smaller so you'd have issue with uh, brake, this brake caliper fitting on so I don't know, maybe if you bought the brake caliper for the Mirage you could make a bracket to fit that and then even then I don't know about the parking brake situation so the best thing to do with this was to re-drill the bolt pattern in this wheel in this uh, rotor it's the only thing that I could come up with um, I was originally looking at doing this project with using the front rotors and also the front caliper making a bracket that would fit them um, basically it would be wider up here these would be wider in order to accommodate those but you wouldn't have a parking brake so uh, right now I do not have a a vehicle inspection or anything that I got to pass where I live but there is six counties north of me that does so you know, constantly the population is increasing everywhere including the area that I live you know I kind of look at I want to keep my vehicle or at least uh, ones that I may be driving later you know passable but anyways, how I got this bolt pattern in here is I made a plug. I do not have it with me to show you, but I made a plug. Uh, one uh, thing is different is it these the center of the hub is different size. Like you see this one here is a smaller hole. This would be a front one, but the, the back would be the same size hub. So they're a different size. You see this much smaller. So I made a plug that I machined this size in and it fit down perfectly on that on that plug and then I flipped this one upside down and it was also a lip machined on that plug to fit this one and then I made a, a top and drilled and tapped the center of it made a plug to basically bolt these things together perfectly center okay so another issue is let's see since there is this is you know a bigger hole that you're going to be putting on a big, a smaller hub this is what centered the rotor up so the problem with you know that is is it now you know the, the rotor doesn't have anything to center it so they made they made these holes much bigger than what the actual lug is i don't know if you can see down in there but my hole is smaller I made my hole uh, smaller to mat more, to closer, closely match the uh, studs so that way I can use the studs to center up my rotor instead of depending on this. How well this all works we're going to find out in the end. Um, you see here we was able to get a new hole here, a new hole here and here but this one here had to share the same hole. Um, it was the only way to get this pattern in here was it was either you sharing a part of the hole of all the holes or you you know this is the best situation that I could get it in the brackets making them 
Basically the end of the axle on a Cobalt SS is shaped like this. This is a metal piece welded to the end of the axle. So you can't just buy this piece. You know, at first I thought it would be a separate piece, but you know, like to replace the back plate of the drum brake. So what I did was I went up to pull apart, pulled everything off, the wheel bearing and all, and took a piece of paper and pressed this shape out. You know, pressed in all of the uh, the you know the, where the bolts went and everything, and then ordered some aluminum plate, cut it out on a bandsaw, and drilled out these these uh, bolt holes. And that gives us our brackets. And I just made two I like because you know this could be the driver's side, and then it just steps over mirror image and these you know it's the uh, doesn't matter if it's front or back. So that gives us our brackets. Um, I had to order new parking brake cables. This is a Cobalt SS parking brake cable. Should fit directly in place of, you know, inside the car, but I do have to remove the seat to get to it. And then, uh, so yeah, we'll have everything and then the brake lines, where the brake line hooks to the axle, or the car, I should say, the car, um, is identical on both models. So I just needed the brake cable set up of a Cobalt SS. And that gives me everything there. So, I can get the wheel removed off the car, get this all this stuff installed, and uh, should be a cakewalk. Before I get started, I thought I would mention something about the pressure distribution on this. Uh, you know, basically, you'd have a on the any vehicle that I found that had disc brakes on it. Up front, you had an ABS module. It was placed in here uh, versus this splitter that's in here. Um, basically, it would, you know, not only be an ABS model, but the possibility, I'd say, of giving front to rear different pressures, so that way the back end isn't locking up. Um, you know, skidding the back tires before the front is fully engaged. So there is a problem. You know, the possibility of a an issue with that um, but I also kind of lean on a, a theory of you know these don't have a whole lot of surface area on the pads you know the, the pads are much smaller I kind of think that there is the possibility that there is no regulation between the front to back um, it's just the fact that these these calipers here have smaller pads, so they're not going to have the effectiveness of the front. And I got to say, every vehicle that I've had in the past 10 years, uh, my GMC Terrain had disc brakes on the back. I had a Malibu with disc brakes on the back. The pads on the back wear twice as fast as the front. The pads on the front. So uh, we're going to see how this works, and I'll let you know in the end of the video. Of my thoughts with it, if, if you know, am I going to need to go get that ABS model you know, module just to put in there, just to have the right you know, pressure um, distribution? It would probably do the pressure distribution with not even being plugged into a computer. It would just be normal brakes through that module, but it would it, it probably still do the the regulations properly. But uh, I'll let you know in the end of this video. Um, how that turns out. But, uh, let's see if we can make this thing here look a little bit better. Well, we got that looking much better. That looks sweet against this. About the same color. Anyways, kind of experimenting and checking out my drilled holes. Let's see if it's running true. And you can kind of see here the difference between you know this hub and the hole that was machined into that rotor. And uh, runs pretty true. It might be out about five thousandths, but I've had this one on here, which is for the front, that actually does fit the axle of the hub. And uh, <laughs> I'd say this one here runs out like twenty. So you know, if that's good, if that's good enough on the front, then this is going to be good enough on the back.
think more of anything it's going like this because of rust and stuff that I don't have cleaned off. So I think that's going to work just fine. Um, as far as uh, getting started here, I think uh, let's take the, the shoes off and get this hardware out of here. I can leave this on the plate and then I'll remove the line back here. Hurry up and get that line on there so that way the brake fluid I'm losing is actually ending up in a caliper. And then uh, we'll work on uh, getting the bearing off of here. And then this uh, cylinder here can come off with the back plate. Alright, where we are at this point, I almost, almost didn't get that line off. I mean, it, it was close to where I was looking at shearing that off. Or rounding it off you can see here it started rounding off but we got it the lines on there bleeder is shut um, anyways you can see this end right here this is what you know this right here is replacing you know it's this has got the sandwich up against it um, but uh, this right this shape right here of this would look like this on a SS model so that's what you're looking at with that um, I also need to drill a hole to mount this line. I'm just looking at this right here was tapped on the SS, but I'll probably just drill a hole all the way through, put a, a bolt and a nut on it. Um, what else we got here? Um, my press in bolt pattern on this piece doesn't fit exactly. I'm going to have to drill one of these holes a little bit bigger to get the thing to go on. But my other plate fits perfectly. Um, pretty much I made two templates when I was at Pull Apart. Made two templates just in case you know one was wrong and I made one of these with one template and that one with the other. Um, this one here is correct. Um, I'm only going to do one side of this car because I want to mark this template out on something else so that because now that I have an actual made part um, I can find center punches that fits these holes exactly. Um, which will give me a good, you know, the, the proper lineup. But this piece here fits perfectly. Also, I can make these holes here a shade smaller than what I did. But uh, these holes here shouldn't be too much of a big deal, basically. I'll just have to put the caliper all on there and get the pads kind of lined up to where they need to be and tighten them down. Um, so this is just a, a, a project of, of establishing what is needed. Um, I have another vehicle that I want to do this to, and... Um, this is the practice vehicle. This vehicle has been the practice vehicle for many different things, painting and everything. So, uh, you know, yeah, this is the correct part. This in here is going to have to be repaired a little bit. Uh, also, for, also for another bit of information, the bearing from, you know, even though the hub is smaller on the end, the bearing from a regular cobalt to an SS, this back bolt pattern is exactly the same, so there's no worries there. Alright, so one big thing that I didn't take in consideration is you see this big hole right here. I need that big hole to be in these plates too. So that is... That kind of sucks. So I gotta get a, a jigsaw out and cut a hole in this thing right here in the center for this to work. So, uh, yeah. Alright, we got the uh, hole cut in the aluminum. That's all figured out now. All right, we got that hole drilled in that aluminum. The bearing is now bolted all up. Pretty much ready for assembly other than figuring out a way to mount this thing to that. All right, thought I'd do a check-in. We got the uh, this bracket right here drilled and tapped to hold that on. And uh, you can see here how things are fitting together. It's pretty decent. Usually have about that much overlap. So uh, we got the uh, mount this up and work on the parking brake cable. So I got to take out the drum brake one and put in the uh, disc one. All right, got it all on there and uh, done. I think it looks pretty good. I uh, got the e-brake cable on, but I'm not gonna hook it up. Yeah, it's in here. This side right here is that cable. Uh, I'm not going to hook all this stuff up until I get the other side done. Uh, right now there's a drum on one side and a disc on the other. Um, 
I'm not going to cover all the what I did today on the other side, but I'll give it a drive after I get the other side done and get back to you guys. Uh, as it is right now, I can tell there's more break on this side. Like if you jam it down, it you feel it pull. You know, it kind of pulls the car because this brake is stronger. But as far as uh, being too strong, I don't think that's going to be an issue. I don't think it's going to need any kind of proportional valve. I really, I really don't think. But we don't really have it broke in yet either. You see here, it's, it's not really seated in fully. But right, we'll see once we get the other side. Hey guys, we got the other side done and I've driven this thing around 100 miles and you know variable you know various trips and uh, I gotta say uh, this is definitely an improvement um, these brakes are more consistent as far as being uh, overpowering or anything like that definitely not um, it's very possible that that splitter in the front of the car is some sort of proportional valve but I have the other Cobalt and I drive it you know most every day and I gotta say first thing in the morning uh, you know, as drum brakes are, when they get damp, you know, just from the surrounding humidity, uh, they get sticky. Um, with this, you don't, you don't have that effect. And I gotta say, you know, first thing in the morning, the drum brakes are actually probably stronger than what these are. Um, these brakes here, you know, cold or hot seem to be about the same. And uh, I hooked up the trailer to help with some moving. And, uh, I can say that it's a lot better pulling that trailer with these brakes than it is with the drums. Um, I've made, I, I've done a little, another little experiment for any of you that wants to uh, cheapen down this project. Say if you're not interested in having the parking brake, if you take these little mounts that, I, that I'm, I'm making to mount the caliper and flip it so that it's facing this way. I already checked the caliper does miss the shock and everything like that but it makes it also that you can put a flex line directly from the caliper to the body of the car um, and that'll eliminate that little steel line the little flex line that goes from the axle to the body and the little flex line that goes from the steel line to this you'll just have one brake line and you'll have to use the uh, you have to switch the calipers from one side of the car to the other so that the way the bleeder is sticking straight up. So basically, the driver's side caliper will go over here, the passenger will go on the driver's side just so that you could bleed it. Um, but yeah, you can move this to here by flipping that mount, misses everything, and, that's, and that would be you would not be able to use a parking brake. Um, this line here is from a first generation Equinox, like so like 2005 uh, front brake line from an Equinox. Um, pretty much it would mount up straight in this way and then it's going to be going around and looping around to get into um, the body mount. So this right here, you know, would just be one brake line instead of three. Um, It'd be good for like off-road purposes or areas that you don't have to worry about any kind of inspection. All right, so oh, before I get to those, I did uh, paint the front ones so they're blue. All right, so I'm gonna make you guys an offer. In the past, I've had people ask me to like make certain things for them, you know, and they'll pay me all kinds of money to make something and. You know, I, it is it is, I barely have enough time in my day to even make out these pieces. But, uh, um, this mount does include the tap for that, it's a bracket that holds the parking brake and the brake line on, you know, if you want the complete setup. Um, so, you know, this has a tap. But anyways, I will make a cardboard template. And basically I have a, a punch that fits perfectly in all these holes that can make an exact copy of what I just made here um, including this little spot right here for the uh, that mount um, I ended up using a hole saw to get these ones cut out so I made some improvements myself and streamlining this a little bit 
But uh, I will make a cardboard template and I'll send it to you guys for 10 bucks. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave my my cell phone number down in the comments section, and uh, so that way, if later on down the road the offer is no longer uh, available, the number will be taken down. But uh, for 10 bucks, I'll send you guys a cardboard template, and I'm thinking just you know 48 states, the lower 48 U.S. states um, at this point. The ten dollars will cover shipping the cardboard piece to you. Um, you just text me, you know, give me your address, and send me ten bucks. I'm thinking like ten dollars in an envelope is gonna make it here. I mean, how many Christmas and birthday cards I've gotten in the past that had twenty bucks in it and or more and showed up at my house. So um, the odds of your ten dollars coming up missing, I think, is pretty slim. But anyway, yeah, I'll, I'll make. You'll have to, you'll be responsible to mark it out on whatever material you want to use and whatever thickness material you want to use, and also drilling your rotors. But at least you'll have this template if you're interested. But uh, until next time, I'll catch you guys later.